Hey everyone, so today I'm just going to be doing an objective uh, tutorial and it's going to be very similar to how I did my quests in my RPG that I demoed a few weeks ago. Um, it looks simple but there is a lot of background stuff going on and you can do simple objectives but the way I'm doing it is for each player so it gets uh, a little bit more complex. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make the map right away. Um, the quest is basically going to be, in this case, is going to be that the first quest is going to say go to an NPC to get your first quest and then the second quest will be what that NPC gives you which is to kill a bunch of units. So there'll be two quests I'm going to show here. The first one's sort of like find a uh, beginner find NPC and the second one is kill some units for that NPC. Um, so I made a new map and I'm in the units tab, units layer. I mean, and for player one let's make an archon which will be your hero. And for player zero let's make the, uh, let's make the colossus, no that's stupid. Let's make the immortal NPC guy. And for player 15, let's place some of my favorite uh, Zerglings to kill. I'll spread them out because the Archon's probably pretty weak. Okay, and that's basically all we need to do here. So let's go right into triggers. And let's delete some of this initial stuff here. And let's make a new action. And what we're going to do is just pan the camera to your, uh, to your hero. So this will work a little bit better. So player one's fine for there. Um, changes to be unit, position of unit, position of value, archon. Okay, and over zero seconds. And now the first thing we need to do is to display a message to you and like give you your first objective and then put a little exclamation mark over your over the NPC here. Um, so we're gonna need some global variables to do that. So let's make a new variable and let's call this quests and I call them quests but they're objectives technically uh, and let's make it an array so let's say you have a four player map you would make this size four and let's say you had ten total quests and you can always adjust this later if you made more um, so what we're gonna have here is for each player they're gonna have ten quests so that we can store store what they are um, separately and then let's make another variable let's call this quest tags and this is basically just going to be a way of storing the exclamation marks over the NPC's head for each player so we can destroy them and hide them and show them as necessary. And this is going to be a text tag array, oops, four, and then ten again because we need to store for each player for each quest because I'm doing um, player separate objectives is what I'm going to show here basically, not object global objectives. Like in Warcraft 3 quests were like quests were for everybody in the in the game but in StarCraft 2 we can actually do it nicely so we can have separate objectives for each player which is really nice and copy paste this variable and we need one more which is quest oops oops quest values um, and these are just going to be integers uh, there we go and we're just going to make this size 3 and what this means is that for each player and then for each quest that that player has there's going to be three values integer values that we can manipulate store do whatever just you know, kill five of this unit, kill six of this unit quest, you could have store that in here. It's just a way of keeping track of stuff. And I made it size three, but it's up to you. I think size three will be fine, meaning we can store three integers for each quest for each player. So this is actually four times ten times three many things. And this is four times ten, so forty things, etc. So we got that. Um, let's go straight straight into back into melee initializ initialization. And let's make a new action. Uh, UI T text message and let's display uh, the immortal has a quest for you exclamation mark and let's make a oh, that's actually a cool color okay so now you'll get a message at the start and we should change this to be well I guess all players is fine because all players starting the game will get this quest and then let's copy paste and change the action to be uh, objective create an objective active primary objective with the text um, visit the immortal description description is what happens when you mouse over so we could say well let's not do anything for that we don't really need anything um, and then let's set the a copy paste and let's do objective set objective players set last objective players to players convert player to player group and click on one and actually we'll just leave it at one so if you had more players um, 
I would actually recommend making a separate objective for each player. Actually, you should do that. But since, um, like if, for instance, if you have an RPG and people are picking heroes from a hero selection uh, thing, whenever they choose their hero, then you would give them this, the player this quest and you would store it for them and stuff like that. So in this case here, I'm just doing it for player one. So we set the player group to one and then objective show slash hide objective. You want to show it. Uh, function last create objective for convert player to player group and player one and then copy paste and change this to be variable set variable and let's change this to be quests uh, one and this I'll leave that at zero because it's quest the first quest and this is one player one um, so if you were doing a hero selection, you could change this to, you know, triggering player or whoever pressed the dialog button, whatever. Um, and let's see, function last create objective. Okay, good. So now we've stored player one's first objective for them. So we know to destroy it later and do whatever, hide the text. Um, and then what we're going to also do is variable, set variable, set quest, oops, set quest values for player one quest zero, value zero to equal one. So what this means is that um, I'm setting this to one so that when our guy walks close to the immortal, he'll get the first quest. It'll check that this is one, meaning you just got this quest, and then it'll set it to zero. And I'll, if you didn't understand that, I'll explain it in a second. You'll see why I have to set this to one. Because we, it's so you, that you don't, you can't keep getting the quest every time you walk back to in range of the immortal. Because you want, once you have the quest, you don't want them to get it again. So, I'm setting this this first value to one, and this is the this is the bonus of having these quest values. And I'm also going to use it to store the number of units you've killed in the second quest. Anyways, so uh, let's see, we got all this, and we should put a little halo over him. So copy paste and change this to be a text tag action. Let's create a text tag with the text exclamation mark for all players change it to convert player to player group one is fine font size of 40 maybe I don't know or 50 let's go huge on this one at position of value immortal height 1.5 maybe initially visible and let's set fog of war to true so that means you can't see it unless you're in range and you know you could copy paste this action and change the color so it's yellow Set text color of last grid text tag to equal, I don't know, gold. It's fine. And you could change the, you know, you could change the edge color to be black so it has a little outline like like uh, WoW does. And then let's copy a variable set whatever and change this variable setting to be quest tags. So quest tags one zero to equal function last created text tag. Oops, I'm going to save this tutorial objectives. One, one, two. I'll put that in there. Okay, so you got your first uh, quest, and then you have a little gold thing to go. Actually, it should be a question mark. Um, if you're going by WoW standards, where it, to complete a quest, it's a question mark um, because we already have the first quest. So now let's make a new trigger, and this, let's call this quest. Uh, zero complete okay and then I'll put in brackets gain one meaning this meaning that uh, after you complete quest zero which is to head to the immortal he's gonna give you another quest um, to go kill these things so I'm just putting this here as a note to myself and uh, when I release my RPG map um, and do a tutorial about it you'll see that I did that a lot with all my quests in it is that I made sure to name like oh this quest this trigger will actually make you gain one complete quest zero etc just to keep track of everything because it gets quite confusing when you have like four different quest lines going in triggers um, anyway so the event for this thing is going to be unit unit uh, leaves enters range of unit any unit enters a distance of let's say two from immortal now we got to check a few things here comparison now we check that the uh, owner of the entering unit uh, no, let's not do that. Click on the left bracket there, and let's change the condition to be unit 
uh, unit classification check. That's what I want. So triggering unit is ah oh, heroics not in there. Hmm. Maybe it is uh, unit. Ah, oh, gotta find this now. Uh, unit filter match would probably be better. Triggering unit is uh, required heroic. There we go. For player, and this is probably not necessary, but unit owner, owner of the entering unit equals equals true. So it is heroic. And make a new condition. I'm going to make an and. And people have told me that you don't have to make an and um, if you're just doing conditions like this because it automatically does and, but I do it anyway. And the other condition we want to check is that, oops, click on the left bracket here, is that the variable quest values, quest values uh, one, oops, I mean unit owner, owner of the entering unit for quest uh, zero and value zero is equal equal to one. So remember back when, let me save, remember back when here we set quest values one zero zero to equal one because all of them are initially zero. Um, so when you come in range of this guy, it's going to check that quest values owner tree unit, which for our case it'll be one, zero, zero, because it's quest zero and value zero equals one, and it'll check that. And if so, let's copy paste this, um, meaning we're a hero and we have this quest. We're going to do an action to set it to zero, meaning, so as soon as this gets set to zero, that means you can't go out of range and come back and get this quest again. Um, it's a way of bookkeeping everything. So we set it to zero for that player, and actually I should change this to unit owner of triggering unit. Um, what I'm, why, the reason I'm doing that is because if you have player two and three, um, this would be two and three here. And if, if, you know, if two and three got the first quest, then they would have quest values two, zero, zero to equal one. And I really hope that makes sense because you do need to keep track of that stuff if you don't want people to keep getting your quest over and over, even though they already have it. Anyways, so we've set that to zero now, so now they can't get this, now they can't uh, trigger this thing anymore, this certain player can't. And then what do we want to do? We want to display a text message. Say, the immortal is a jerk and asks you to kill three zerglings. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Four, and then change this to convert player to player group for player uh, function unit owner owner of the entering unit to the subtitle I use subtitle area because it's like it'll it's sort of like the wow uh, chat area like the quest things sometimes pop up there too or things you complete um, so now what we need to do is objective uh, set objective state well actually let's destroy objective this is the way um, you can mark an objective as completed but what I prefer to do is just remove it completely. So let's destroy objectives, function unit owner. So owner of tree unit zero. So quest zero just disappears off your list now. Um, and then it's, and then after that, and that's the reason we stored quest quest one zero to equal last created objective, so that we could uh, um, so we can destroy it later, and copy paste. And then let's do uh, let's see, text tag set the color of text tag. So what we do need to do now is set the text color of variable quest tags function unit oops unit owner owner of trigger unit um, well I'm going to change this to one and then I'm going to do another action because our because our quest tag is on the same because the question marks on the same guy I'm just going to do a little work around here set quest tags function sorry there's a lot of this unit owner of trigger unit to equal quest tags one to equal quest tags sorry about this unit owner tree unit zero so that means that because this is quest one that you're, you're gaining quest one right now and you've just completed quest zero um, so when you gain quest one, we w we still want to have the text tag over top, except it's going to be a gray uh, 